Welcome to my channel, Atin Nubula the Lawyer, Karibune Sana, and today we are going to be talking about Chapter 7 of the Constitution, which is on representation of the people. Basically, you are going to be analyzing what the Constitution says about election and how elections are to be conducted. Then I will give a sneak peek into the various electoral laws that are in Kenya. If you enjoy the video, like, share, and subscribe. you are going to be talking about chapter 7 of the constitution now this chapter is on representation of the people and we can talk about representation of the people and when we began in chapter 1 we say that all sovereign power belongs to the people so basically it's this chapter is going to talk about how people are to be represented in various elective posts and this shows that this chapter is about the electoral system if we analyze the electoral system we see that there are various components and uh, there have been discussions that we should change our electoral system but first of all it's important for all of us to understand what our electoral system is all about. Now if you look at article 81 of the constitution of Kenya, this article talks about the principles of our electoral system. The first provision under article 81 is that citizens are supposed to earn exercise their political rights guaranteed under article 38 some of these political rights include the right to participate or form and join any political party um, to participate also um, in uh, elections um, that every vote should count that is universal suffrage um, there, there are quite a number so we look at uh, when we'll be going through um, the various rights guaranteed under the, under the constitution under the Bill of Rights Chapter 4, that will be another video. So uh, back to Article 81, the principles of the electoral system. I said the first one is that, that citizens should um, exercise their political rights guaranteed under Article 38. Then we have the second one um, about universal suffrage. This is basically the notion that every vote should count. I don't know if that that's the first, uh, the feeling that uh, Kenyans have when they go to cast their votes that actually their votes count but that will be a discussion for another day. Another principle also is that the two-third representation in all elective bodies. We know very well that our parliament has not been able to actually pass the two-third gender rule and this has elicited a lot of reactions and uh, we know that our chief justice just recently proposed that parliament should be dissolved for failure to pass um, that two-third gender rule so that will is also among the principles and of course now representation of the people living with disabilities and all other um, uh, marginalized groups so basically our electoral system um, looks at inclusivity a lot because if we see that all these um, important standards are being factored in it is a very let me say progressive type of electoral system even as we are still continuing this discussion we also want to now analyze that the various let me say requirements for one to be a voter because now the constitution provides um, how someone is supposed to uh, register not actually the constitution i would say first of all that the constitution provides for the requirements yes that one's supposed to uh, have to be an eligible voter of course that person person should be of sound mind that person of course should be an adult citizen and then that person should not have been convicted for any electoral offense within the last five years then we also see that the same chapter provides for now the IBC. The IBC is actually the body mandated to conduct elections in Kenya. And uh, previously we've had the electoral, it was I think it was called the Electoral Commission of Kenya, yes, the ECK. 
so now it is the independent electoral and boundaries commission now they have various mandates including um the limitation of the uh, constituencies um ensuring they oversee and facilitate the whole election they're supposed to ensure that also uh, when a referendum is conducted it meets the standards set out in the constitution so in also by elections that the one who run the whole process so basically um the constitution just provides for the constitution uh, the mandates for the ibc and uh if you look at these mandates they are underpinned also under the provision for commissions you see so basically the ibc is supposed to ensure that the elections that um are supposed to be conducted in kenya are free fair and verifiable so there are other important roles of the ibc i have not mentioned um there are just four of them but they are very core to the functions of the ibc the first one is that the ibc is supposed to ensure that there is a continuous registration of voters this is to ensure that at the time of the elections all those who wanted to participate in the elections and are of adult age have been registered so that they can exercise their political rights guaranteed under Article 38 of the Constitution. The other role is the continuous um, revision of the voters' role. <clears throat> Sometimes we see during elections some people's names do not feature in the, re the register. So it's the duty of the IBC to ensure that the voters' role is up to date at the time of the election. Another important role that I had not mentioned is that um, the IBC is supposed to oversee the party nominations and settle the disputes uh, arising out of the nominations. Yeah, we know that the nominations um, during the nominations of candidates uh, in political parties is a very hotly contested. Um, let me say, uh, uh, hotly contested, hotly contested uh, exercise. Yes, hotly contested exercise. So it is one that requires a lot of um, intervention by the IBC. We are going to be also looking at the provision on how um, elections uh, election results are supposed to be transmitted because this is provided for also in chapter 7 we see that um, once the election has uh, been conducted of which the elections are conducted at the polling stations then the presiding officer of each polling station is supposed to announce the results after the uh, presiding officer has announced the results then the returning officer who is higher than the presiding officer is supposed to collect all the uh, the results at each polling station in a constituency and then um, uh, announce those results also those two points that have mentioned are what usually bring a lot of contention at the time of elections because some people will be asking um the, uh, did the presiding officer announce the results at the polling station and has the returning officer announced what was um, registered at the uh, polling station so it's it's usually a lot of back and forth but of course now the IBC this time round is to ensure or the IBC generally is to ensure that the, as I've said that process is strictly adhered to so this chapter on representation of the people also talks about um, independent candidates so one of the major provision for one to vote an, as, an, as an independent candidate is that um, he should not be a member of a political party three months before the elections. Now, sometimes some people decide at the last minute to vote as an independent candidate, maybe because um, they, of, that, of the certain politics that uh, occur in the political party. But uh, I do not know, or it is not in my knowledge, if the IBC strictly adheres to this because you could find um, some people are able to bend rules to buy as an independent candidate at the last minute. This chapter also now talks about political parties which are essential in the Kenyan democracy because we know that uh, our democracy or our 
uh, our electoral system allows for uh, multiple political parties. Before 1992, of course, it was a one-party state, but now we have a multiple elect uh, multiple political parties. Sorry about that. So this. Uh, uh, the provisions on political parties, of course, is that the political parties should adhere to the provisions of the Political Parties Act and, of course, um, now ensure that all uh, how they are formed complies with the Constitution and that um, they are used as a vehicle to be able to further politics in Kenya. How political parties are to be regulated is provided for in the Political Parties Act and it also provides on how they are supposed to subscribe to the Code of Conduct provided for by the IBC and also their candidates are supposed to abide by that same Code of Conduct. Um, the issue of registration of political parties is still in the same Political Parties Act. The issue of um, their constitution, their rules, and also um, financing of, uh, of financing of political parties. All issues surrounding pol political parties are enshrined in the Political Parties Act. Now I'm moving to talking about some of the legislations that are concerned the elections. The first one, of course, is the Elections Act. Now the Elections Act provides for everything on the procedures, the systems to be used, all issues surrounding elections. Then we have the um, we have the IBC Act. Now the IBC Act is the one that uh, provides for how uh, the various commissioners are to be appointed, the the various functions in detail, how the commission is to be run, all the, the administrative issues around the IBC is provided for under the IBC Act. Now we have the Election Offences Act. Now this act provides for all the um, provides for now the rules or how elections are to be conducted and the misconduct which are punishable um, during elections. So this act is very robust and for all people who are contesting and polit political parties they should ensure that they abide by the rules failure to which they will co be convicted um, for election malpractices or offenses also i've remembered another important um, provision under chapter 7 of the constitution is when the timelines for electoral disputes now it provides that electoral disputes are to be to be filed within 28 days of the announcing of the re results the national results so all those who have um issues that maybe the elections were rigged or uh they feel that they they were not conducted in a free fair free and fair manner they should raise their complaints especially of course now electoral disputes are not to be uh, to be adjudicated in court so they should ensure that they comply with that timeline of 28 days so in a nutshell those are the major provisions of the constitution under chapter 7 and those are the various acts that deal with the elections in kenya just to recap uh, we've said the acts are the political parties act the elections act the election offenses act then we have um, the IEDC act so i hope this video has been beneficial to all of you if you enjoyed the video yeah give it a thumbs up